Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Law Sweet Lessons. I'm your host, Deshauna Barber. So excited to have you all back to the podcast. This podcast is all things self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. And I'm excited for today's episode. It is called Redefining Your Rejection into Redirection. And I think that this is such an important topic because we all are going to deal with rejection. We're going to deal with failure. We're going to deal with losses. We're going to deal with shut doors that we wish had opened for us. And sometimes we resent the doors that closed without realizing that they closed for a reason, without recognizing that that was not the opportunity we were meant for and that there's something greater waiting on us. And it's always interesting because when you look back, you can always look at opportunities lost or things that didn't work out. And you're always thinking to yourself, wow, everything really did fall into place the way that it was supposed to. But in the process of experiencing the rejection, that's just not where your mind is at. You're wondering, why didn't this happen for me? Is there something wrong with me? What did I not bring to the table? What was the issue? And it turns into this dwelling session in which you're wondering all the things you could have done differently and just almost looking at yourself as a failure. And that has happened to me so many times over my life. And really in my early 20s was a time period in which I was constantly sitting in a dwelling state of mind in which I was sad and upset and frustrated about all these things that did not go the way I wanted it to go without realizing that it went in the, that it went in the direction it needed to go. And that one day I would be grateful for the fact that what I wanted is not what I got. And I think that over the years, I have really, really, really understood the power of destiny and the power of fate. And that sometimes what we want is not what's meant for us. And that there is beauty in trusting the process. There's beauty in trusting that there's something bigger waiting on you. And there are moments in which I realized there was always something greater waiting for me. I just needed to be patient. I needed to trust the process. And I remember specifically in 2018, I don't know if I've said this out loud. I may have said this on the podcast before, but I auditioned for The Price is Right to be one of the card girls. And it was interesting because in 2018, it was probably one of the lowest times in my life. We all know the eviction story. If you haven't, go back, look up, the episode Eviction to Victory. This was all around that time frame. So it was a moment in which my motivational speaking career had not taken off. It was a moment in which I was living in what felt like extreme poverty. I was barely surviving. I was living off of cents on the dollar. And I was chasing this dream of being what I am today, which is a full-time motivational speaker. And In 2018, this dream seemed so far away. And in some moments, it felt like it wasn't going to happen for me. And I dealt with so much doubt and questioning whether or not I was on the right road. So I began, you know, looking for other opportunities because I started to question whether or not speaking was what was actually in the cards for me. But I was also looking for something that could also provide me income while I built my speaking career. And if it never becomes a career, I still have this other profession to fall back on. And I remember getting contacted by an agency that represented a particular TV show called The Price is Right. And I don't know about you all, I actually... (laughs) <laughs> never watch The Price is Right. <laughs> I never watched The Price is Right. Sure, it's a great show, uh, but just not a show that I watch. And when I got the email, I'm thinking to myself, I do not watch this show. 
I don't know what's going on, like, but let's just read through it and see, you know, what they're reaching out for. And they're reaching out because they were looking for a new card girl or card girls. So the girls that sit on the stage and if the toaster is three fifty six, they lift up the card and it's actually four dollars and twelve cents, right? So they're the person that also shows, you know, look at this fancy crock pot and they do all these hand movements and yes and yes that's what they do right and they get paid a pretty hefty check now the money like the range in which the girls got paid they sent that over which i think is probably an incentive for girls to respond because you're looking at this and you're wondering uh is this something i want to do but then you see how much the girls get paid and they get paid pretty well in the six figure range from what I remember. I don't know if that's changed, but from what I remember, they were getting paid in the six figure range and they were working. What I didn't realize is that they do multiple shows a day. So although you're seeing them on Tuesday, they might've filmed, filmed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all in one day. So they mentioned also that for, I think three to four months out of the year, you're doing three shows a day. And I thought, wow, that is so exhausting. Um, but you get paid per show. And I remember thinking to myself, one, I'm in the military at the time, 2018, I was in the military and I still had my reserve duty. So I still had one week in a month in which I had to be at my unit, you know, in uniform serving. I thought about that and then I thought about the possibility of getting speaking engagements and speaking opportunities during that three to four month time frame in which I'd have to turn those opportunities down because you are working almost every single day filming three different TV shows. I mean, uh, three different, three different episodes of that show. And I still was in a serious point of desperation. <laughs> and I needed money and I thought this was an opportunity that I wanted to see if it would come to anything. And I'll tell you all a little bit more right after this break. Welcome back from the break. Okay, so I decided to pursue this opportunity of possibly being a card girl and the price is right. And I have like no money. I have no money, y'all. I scrap up a few pennies and I purchase a flight to Los Angeles. Didn't even have money for a hotel. So I contacted actually my friend whose name is Desi. She was Miss Virginia USA my year. I knew she lived in Los Angeles. So I reached out to her and said, hey girl, I need a place to stay. I'm coming out there for an audition. You know, can I crash on your couch? And she said, hey, you know, actually you can stay at my apartment if you want. I'm not going to be there, but I'll leave the keys for you. Honey, these girls are just so sweet. Like I have some of the greatest friends on the planet. So she actually let me crash at her Los Angeles apartment for free while she wasn't even there, right? Such a great person. And I crashed. I got my makeup done for this. I did my hair. I bought a really cute dress. I mean, I'm using my last bit of money to be able to get to this audition and look, you know, presentable. I get to the audition. There are like 12 other girls here for the audition. Again, I'm the type of person where in my mind, you know, if it's me, it's going to be me. If it's not, that's okay. But I would really like this opportunity. I go down to finish the audition and they have like, different it wasn't tupperware it was uh <laughs> some kitchenware and they had little cards and you had to you know smile and do this and do this and i think the judges could tell or, or the the individuals that were choosing the girl i think they could just tell i was not into it i'm not good at it i, I y'all can clearly tell that this is it just looked very it didn't look genuine <laughs> so i'm just sitting here like you know, trying my best here. And I mean, I was there for maybe 15 seconds and they said, okay, thank you, Deshauna. Thanks for coming out. We'll be in touch. Never heard from them. <laughs> it's 2023 and I still haven't heard from these people. Okay. It wasn't, I didn't hear, Hey, we chose someone else. I didn't hear, Hey, thank you for coming out. 
you know, just uh, we'll be in touch in a month or two. I didn't hear anything. Five years later, I still haven't heard anything, right? Or is it six years? And I remember after a few weeks, I was going to email them to check in. But I, I told myself, Deshana, if they were going to choose you, they would have emailed you. And they clearly are not interested in choosing you. And then I also said to myself, let's be honest, you would probably hate this job. <laughs> like, let's, let's be real. You would probably hate this job. It doesn't come natural to you. Majority of the women that work on the price is right as the card girls and the, the girls on the stage, they're almost all models and they're paid to just, you know, that's their thing. Um, I personally, I know people mix up pageant girls and models all the time, but pageant girls are not necessarily models. That might be something they do as well. But being a pageant girl does not automatically mean it's synonymous with being a model. And I'm not a model. I, I, I take pretty pictures on social media back then and to this day, um, but I, I would not consider myself to be a model nor a professional model. So I'm, I'm not really paid to do this, right? <laughs> and it did not come natural to me. And I knew that I probably would have been very unhappy. So while I contemplated emailing these individuals, I eventually decided not to do that because I knew that I probably wouldn't enjoy it anyway. And if they were interested, they would have said something. And I didn't take the defeat too bad because I knew that I still had a singular goal and that was to become a motivational speaker and that I attempted something. It seemed interesting, seemed like something I could do, did not work out. And then I move on. And really that's the point of today's episode is to talk about how exactly to re accept rejection in a way that we don't take it to heart, we don't dwell in that rejection, and that we really do look at it as redirection. Because within a year of that audition, I had turned, after my video went viral on social media, within a year, I'd already had a six-figure speaking business. Within a year of that audition, if I had continued and somehow gotten the opportunity, I would not have been able to build the business that I had a year following the audition or have the flexibility in the business that I have today. So I look back and I think to myself just how appreciative I am for that opportunity not happening and for that door not opening because had it opened, it would have changed the trajectory of my life right now. And I like where I'm at right now. This is what I've dreamed and it's what I've prayed for. I have not prayed to be a card girl on the price is right. And this is, you know, no disrespect to women that have, but that's just not what I prayed for. I prayed for the life that I'm living right now in this moment as a full-time speaker, making, you know, great money and traveling the world, inspiring individuals. This is a complete dream come true. And if I had been given the opportunity that I thought I wanted things would have been different. So again, my challenge to everyone watching today is to remember that what is meant for you is for you. It will not pass you. And you have to make sure that you're not always looking for things just to get a check. That was my goal for that position that I was going for. I just needed to check. I need the money. But it wasn't something that I loved. It wasn't something that I was passionate about. And I'm grateful that it didn't work out because I don't think I would have had real happiness in that place. So it's also about prioritizing the things that make you happy and prioritizing the career fields that make you happy and chasing a passion that is something that you chose for yourself and not forgetting the end goal. So for me, that was a moment in which it wasn't rejection, it was redirection, and I'm so beyond appreciative of that. And when we get back, I will dive right into the lessons. Back in a sec. Welcome back from the break. All right, so we're diving into the lessons of redirection, not rejection. The first thing, is to practice self-compassion. Be kind and compassionate to yourself when facing disappointments. Understand that 
everyone encounters setbacks and it's not a reflection of your worth or your abilities. We cannot allow our accomplishments to affect our confidence. And here's my thing. I say this in speeches all the time. It is one of my go-tos when it comes to how to deal with rejection, how to deal with failure, how to deal with loss. It is about focusing on the input and not focusing on the outcome. Okay, here's where I'm going with this. The reason why you can't place your confidence in your accomplishments is because what happens to your confidence when you fail? If your confidence is dependent on your success, what happens when you fail? What happens when you lose? What happens when a door closes? Do you lose your confidence? Does your self-worth and your self-value go away? What happens to your self-worth when things are not going the way that you want them to go? I personally love the fact that I have a whole laundry list of accomplishments, but I love even more my resume of failures, moments in which something didn't go my way, moments in which I did not accomplish the goal that I was going after, moments in which things did not go the way I wanted and there was this massive setback. And the reason why I appreciate my resume of failures over my resume of successes is because my resume of failures show the resilience and the tenacity that I have to stay committed to what I'm doing. It means that when a door shut in my face, I found another one to open. It meant that when someone told me no, I climbed mountains to find my yes. It meant that when the world tried to knock me down, I was getting back up again, finding another opportunity and finding something else that I could dedicate myself to. It means that I did not give in to the loss. I did not give in to the failure. I did not give in to the moment that was meant to break me. And it means that I'm trusting the process. So when I say focus on input and not outcome, I mean, focus on the time that you dedicated to the project. I mean, focus the energy that you committed, focus the time that you committed, all those things that you gave to what you're going for. I want you to focus in on that and celebrate that. And don't celebrate the outcome because oftentimes we have no control over the outcome. I had no control over whether or not these individuals choosing the card girl is going to choose me. I have no say. All I can do is show up to this audition, my best self, the best version of myself, do the best that I can and the rest is up to them. I am happy that I took a chance. I'm happy that I scrapped up all the money I could find to fly myself to Los Angeles. I'm happy that I went there. I did the best that I could. I'm happy about that. And I'm not losing confidence over the fact that they chose someone else. That is an outcome that I had no control over. And they always say, you know, the poem, grant me the serenity. And it's grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. And I've always lived by those quotes. I've always believed in that quote. I've always understood that there are so many things that are out of my control and that it is very unfair to me to place my happiness, my confidence, my self-value, my worth in an outcome that I have no say in. Only thing that I control is how I show up. And I always show up my best self and I always show up very committed. And I always believe that tenacity and resilience and commitment are characteristics only winners have. And I've always considered myself a winner, no matter the outcome, no matter my successes, I focus and I hone in on my commitment, my dedication to what I'm chasing. And that's to me determines whether or not I win or lose. The only time in which I lose is when I don't try. That to me is an automatic loss. And I try everything. I go for everything. So because of that, I consider myself to be in a constant state of winning. So be compassionate to yourself. Trust the process and realize that your confidence needs to be in your commitment and it needs to be in your dedication and nothing else. Second lesson, you need to make sure that you are using this process to learn. 
oftentimes when we are experiencing failure, we're so focused on the failure, but we're not focused on the lesson and the information that we've gained from that failure and from that loss. I think during that period, I realized more and more just how much I want to be a speaker and how much I know that this is for me to inspire other people because what I'm doing in this moment, it does not serve me. It is not for me. I think going there, I just learned more about myself that Deshauna, you really can't even fake the things that you don't want. <laughs> I learned that I just don't even need to invest any time and energy into a space I don't actually want to be in because it's going to show on my face. Like It's just a waste of time. So now I've received auditions for multiple TV shows. I kid you not. Some are dating shows, some are competition shows. Like I've received so many inquiries from individuals that are interested in having me audition and I always turn them down because I've learned my lesson. I know that this isn't the space for me, so I'm not even gonna waste short time. I'm not even gonna waste my time. I learned more about myself and therefore, I think that the failure was worth it. Then I think it's important to stay open to serendipity, as they say. It's uh, be open to unexpected opportunities that may arise during redirection. Sometimes the path you don't plan for it can lead to the most fulfilling experiences. I, I, I believe in that completely. That there's these serendipitous moments where you literally see the universe realigning you the proper way. And it's like, gosh, I'm so happy I'm here in this moment because it all makes sense why this didn't work out. It all makes sense why that didn't work out. It's trusting the process, it's trusting fate, it's trusting destiny. And it's realizing that every shut door is you being pushed closer and closer to the door that is meant to open for you. So I'm going to close out today's episode with that. And again, thank you all so much for tuning in to my podcast, Our Lost Sweet Lessons. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button, the share button, and share this amazing podcast with your friends, family, colleagues. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye. Yay, networks.